Welcome to the Good, the Bad, and the Sequel Q&A. My name's Doug. And the first sequel up to kick off our third annual Scary Sequel Month is Hellraiser 5 Inferno. Is it a Hellraiser movie? Barely. But man, it was a blast to discuss. We had our horror sequel expert, Chris Egan, here to help us break it down because we needed all the help we could get. But this week, oh man, this week, I was lucky enough to interview actress, model, host, interviewer. She does it all. And she's a Cenobite and has a pretty gruesome scene that she loves to talk about. And that's Patricia Cara. You know her from Deal or No Deal. And there's so many, if you go on her website, which I will put in the episode notes, there's so many products she was on over the years and commercials and infomercials. You're like, I've seen that face so much. And of course, from Deal or No Deal, she was on that show from the beginning. Great stories about that and working with Howie Mandel and Donnie Osmond. Man, she has so many amazing stories to discuss. And she was great to chat with. We had a, we had a good time. It was right around the holidays last year. And I remember my internet was going out. She was so calm and cool. And uh, I edited out all those parts so I don't sound like a moron because that's that's what I do. I don't want to sound like a dummy. But, uh, but yeah, Patricia's great. So before I start the interview, don't forget to review, rate, share us, tell your friends, your neighbors, even people you don't like. Tell them about us and also follow us on all social media. We like to interact with folks. And that's at sequels only on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So that's it. I'm going to shut my yapper because here is a very interesting interview that I had an absolute blast going back to edit. And that is actress, model, and Cenobite, Patricia Cara. But yeah, so thanks for being so patient. What I always like to do is like start off and it's like fitting for the storm that we're, that we're having out here. Like you're used to that, like growing, you grew up in Chicago, right? Yeah. Grew up there and lived in New York for a little while too. So oh, sweet. Chicago is definitely harsher than New York. Oh yeah. That's what I was going to ask you. So growing up in Chicago, you grew up there, harsh winners, Bears fan, I'm sure. <laughs> Diehard Bears fan. I'm- so growing up when was it like what was your first pursuit of like when did you think like hey i want to be either like a model or on tv like how does that even come about for you uh when i was at like i would say four years old i kept thinking i wanted to be a singer and a dancer i can't sing to save my life i'm a pretty okay dancer uh, but uh, I knew early on, I just loved the entertainment. I didn't exactly know what entertainment was, but I loved being an entertainer. And then I started watching like American Bandstand back then. I don't know how old you are, but American oh, no, Bandstand was a big thing with Dick Clark back then. Okay. I'm sorry you would know what that is. That was still around when you were younger? Uh, Saturdays were the day. My sisters and I would watch it. We would dance around the house. Um, and then I watched fame. And when I saw fame, as I got, got a little older, I was like, I want to go to that school, um, and dance around the streets and, uh, didn't quite happen that way, but I did go to school for, uh, I was a dance major, a dance and theater major. And just so early on, I wanted to, but I didn't start modeling till about 15, 16 years old. And that led to everything else along the way. And then moving out of Chicago, working everywhere uh, internationally, and then moved to Florida. Wow. Uh, short period of time. Wasn't for me. Uh, then I went to New York, and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I love New York so much. I miss it quite a bit. So how at 15 or 16 did modeling come about? Is it something that you pursued? Or was somebody like, hey, you should try this? Different people would be like, oh, you should model. You should try modeling. Uh, and I didn't know how to get into it. I wanted to. Uh, I, I was really uh, into I would look at those magazines with uh, Christy Turlington, if you know who she is. And Rachel Hunter was a big model back oh, yeah. then. So I, I just would see them in magazines and think, I want to do what they're doing. This looks glamorous. And it is glamorous, but at the same time, it's a lot of hard work. It's not all the glitz and glamour everybody thinks it is. Uh, definitely a lot of hard work along the way. Uh, but yeah, so I started 
asking the questions. My sister is a little older than me who took me around to agencies and would ask, she was a hairstylist, she's a hairdresser. So she would talk to clients like, hey, what do you know about modeling and agencies? And if she came across anybody, she would get information. And we went through the yellow pages, which a lot of people probably don't know what that is right now. (laughs) Um, But went through the yellow pages of agencies and just started contacting them and meeting with them and learning along the way. So yeah, wow. I totally dated myself. That's so cool that you're that like you wanted it that bad. And that's what I find with all the people I've interviewed. Like mostly it's people in entertainment that I interview, like TV film, but it's always that sort of this part of like that happened. Like they like pursued it. They slept on couches when they didn't have a place because they wanted (laughs) to work on Broadway. So like, that's so cool that you guys did that. So do you remember your first like big print ad? Was it like a local Chicago one or was it like a national spot? I think the the print ads I did in Chicago were uh, there was one called body wrappers that I kept. uh, It was fitness wear worked for them quite a bit in Chicago. And then uh, I was a Miller light girl and a Jägermeister girl. So I was in their posters. Um, So those were like my first introduction. It was catalog work and posters. That was the big thing in Chicago back in the day. Yeah. And then yeah. So yeah. <laughs> wow. I haven't thought about those days in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so then I guess you went to Florida. It was for modeling. You know, you had something down there. Is that why you were there for a little bit? I uh, tried Florida because uh, South Beach was just starting. Uh, it, it modeling, the modeling business there was just opening up. It, it became the hot spot for models. Uh, so I thought, okay, I know I'm going to end up in LA eventually yeah. and like let me try florida and i it it wasn't for me i it was a big party scene when i got there I, even the agents were out till like five o'clock in the morning i'd be up first thing in the morning ready to like roll and <laughs> everybody was still sleeping uh, or just getting to sleep when i was getting up <laughs> so i that's when i went to new york and i, I new york changed my life uh, it was just the best experience personally professionally just um the work there was different than Chicago and uh, Florida, South Beach. Yeah, and so, South Beach was a temporary thing. Yeah, so when you were in New York, is that when, what was like the turning point? Was it like a specific audition or meeting a certain agent or what was that? I would say some of the auditions I started getting were just uh, better auditions, um, bigger auditions. I started doing more commercials. I didn't nice. think about being in commercials, but when I got to New York, all of a sudden my modeling agencies were sending me out for hosting stuff. Hosting was just starting um, at the time. So I started booking hosting and auditions, commercials, and uh, print, more print work. And, and there were just quality stuff that I loved. It, they were fun jobs too. It just got bigger and better. And I was like, okay, I want more of this. Then it just rolled from there. One thing led to the next, to the next. And then when I moved to LA, I thought, oh, I've got all this work behind me. It was so hard here in LA the first two years. It was like I had no background in entertainment whatsoever. It, it was just really tough, a different ball game, which was surprising. Was it just the connections? Like you start on the bottom of the food chain when you go out to LA or? Yep, start it. You have to start all over. Whereas in uh-huh. New York, when I got there, I didn't know anybody. I just started going to agencies, did the same thing I did in Chicago and Miami, but I started booking stuff right away in LA. It took a while. uh, The relationships had to build. They're more about the relationships and it took time before people hired you. Different process, very different process. Um, Again, I was kind of surprised and I thought, should I change career? Should I do something (laughs) different? What's happening? So, uh, but luckily I stuck it out and then (laughs) other things started coming to fruition and yeah, yeah. Things took off and, uh, here we are Yeah, many many years later, especially like New York. When I talked to people that did commercials, like they were in New York back then, like either they were trying to act or Broadway and like commercial work then was like really good money from what people have told me. They almost say like, wow, they're like. Yeah, commercials were like the thing back then because you could do so many. And so do you remember like your first? I always like asking people's first because I feel like that brings back like those yeah. memories. Like I love you remember this. like your or early on, like you're like the one you're like you saw yourself on TV, you're like, 
oh my God, this, this is like real. I'm, I think one of the first ones, in, one of the first commercials, there were two around the same time. I don't know which one was first. It was a Bally's commercial, but I was actually hired as an extra and with the possibility of getting bumped up. And, and uh, so I did the job. I was an extra, but they ended up featuring me. So I got the bump up and then I ended up getting union and getting the residuals. And, nice. and then there was another one for Lady Foot Locker around the same time. And that was a, a, a big commercial and print ad. So there was, I walked to the stores and they had these huge, huge pictures of me, like walking my dog and my sneakers. And uh, it was actually really cool. Just, to, it was such a new experience, such a different experience, but it was really cool. So it was between those two. I just don't know. That's which awesome. First. I can't remember. And then what about magazine cover wise? Was that when you, cause you were on a ton of, uh, a ton of covers, was that in New York ever, or was that once you got to LA? Cause that's pretty cool. Like obviously seeing yourself like at a foot locker is pretty awesome, but being able to go into like the checkout stand or, you know, at like the bookstore and you see like, you on a magazine, that's something. You're making me think, I love this. You're really making me think. I'm trying to think. I, some in New York, but probably more when I moved to LA, but some in New York, more like Glamour Magazine was in New York and uh, shape magazine i did a lot of um a lot of fitness stuff in new york actually and then like i said more in la as yeah. time went on over the years i've been here for a long time now <laughs> long yeah, but time. some of those magazines i remember when they first came out like some of those ones i was looking i don't know if I was, it was on your website or somewhere i'm like man that was like early on like i'm thinking time time wise when i would think that just based on age, I'm not going to say your age, but I'm saying based right, on right, time, right. I'm like, I'm I like, mind. I'm like Maxim and FH, FHM was one of them. FHM. Like, okay. Those yeah. were in LA. Those were. That's what like I was going to say. I'm like, man, I was early on here. that. I remember it, I guess. But are those magazines around? Maxim is still around, right? But FHM, I don't know if it I is. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if Maggie, I, I'm, I haven't <laughs> bought a magazine in a long time. <laughs> I don't think anybody does anymore. Everybody's yeah. online. Yeah. <laughs> so that so you go to LA, you talk about the hosting gigs. Uh was well, that was in New York too, right? The hosting part of it. Yeah, that's where it started. It that yeah. it just was the new thing. And the, one of my agents is like uh, said, Hey, I've got this audition for you. And I'm like, what is it? Hosting. Okay, what's that? All right, sure, I'll go. And I ended up booking it and it was pretty cool. It was fun. I got to go to Arizona for uh I think it was a spring break thing at Lake Havasu. Nice interviewing people and it was a blast i mean it's spring break um, oh, yeah. so yeah it was it was pretty fun so that was my first first hosting gig and then uh yeah more down the road when i came to la it became a bigger thing and that's cool your game for it i'm sure your agent is like man this is great to have a client that's like yes yes try and they'll look where it went to it gave you the opportunity to to do that and then so down on like your timeline so like so now to go over to because you're in la now i'm sure when you got like the gigs of like it was all in the same year so i don't know what happened first like credits wise on imdb so mad tv which is a really funny sketch that you're in that was fun it was so fun <laughs> like 98 degrees i mean <laughs> yeah yeah it was pretty funny i was just looking at that video not too long ago yeah so like that's just audition. Your agent says, Hey, this show is looking for somebody to be at the bar. And then is that all the way it went? And then you go there? No, it was, uh, I think it was an extras agency for that too, where they called me up. It wasn't an, a regular agency of mine agent. Um, and they said, Hey, can you make it here in like an hour for mad TV? Uh, they didn't give me any details, just bring clothes do your own hair and makeup in an hour and get there. Luckily the studio was right by my house. It wasn't too far. Uh, so I was just running, fixing myself up in the car, doing the makeup and uh, got to the studio. And then it, it's a lot of, you sit around and wait after, once you get there, uh, ha still had no idea what I was doing. And then they just were like, okay, let's go. We're gonna, you're gonna be with 98 degrees. And then they brought in the stars from mad TV yeah. and we did the skit and it was, hilarious it was so much fun it was worth it so there was a lot of that in the beginning where just 
last minute calls, just get there. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. Sure. <laughs> Cause I'm sure some of them didn't make it on your IMDb. What were some of the other ones? Yeah. Cause the, the first one's on there are that, and then Hellraiser Inferno. Hellraiser was another one. It was just a random, not from one of my regular agents. They called <laughs> and I don't even remember what exactly they said to me. Basically you're an alien or you're going to look like one. You're going to be in full makeup. Uh, sure. Once again, I'll do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, those were both around the same time, uh, Mad TV, and I think like in the year 2000. Yep. Yep. So went into, I thought it was going to be a day's work. It ended up being a few weeks and the makeup was really cool. We had to go prior to filming where they had to um, make our heads the way they looked on Hellraiser and the body and then the bodysuit. It was, it took, I think, 12 hours to do it all. And then once you were done, you can go to the bathroom. <laughs> like once you were in that outfit and that makeup, you, that's it. You had to just stay that way. So, but it was cool. It was worth it. It was a fun shoot. I was just actually recently watching some of the scenes. I would, I've never watched the full. Oh, really? Movie. But every time I turn the TV on, I catch that scene of where uh, my tongue wraps around his throat. Yeah. And I kill him and my hand goes into his chest and blood starts gushing. I love the scene. I love stuff like that. Not real life <laughs> stuff like that, but I love stuff like that movie wise. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny. You start, you're starting modeling at 15, 16, uh, hosting ads. And then this just cause you're like, you know, what? I'm game. Oh yeah. That's and, and that's the thing. One thing would lead to the next thing I, like I started here would just get these random opportunities whether it was through an agency or a referral or whatever it was um, and then the one thing just led to the next and it just built up from there which was yeah for, I, uh, I love that you're making me think about all this stuff it's stuff that I, I just haven't thought about in forever yeah no no that's cool it. but that's what that's what Hollywood is about it's about connections I've talked to people that they did like theater back in like the seventies and it led to jobs. They got 40 years later because they had a relationship with somebody then, but that's what it's all about. Cause you never know. Cause Hollywood's really a small, it's really a small group. So you're going to see that person group. again. Like most likely you're going to be on set with maybe somebody from Hellraiser, you know, even in five years. And they're going to be like, Oh, she was great. But if you weren't, then they're gonna be like, Oh, get her out of here. I can't tell you how many times it's happened that way where you come across people down the road. It just, it could be five years, 10 years, exactly what you said, but it's networking. It's people remember if you were nice on set or whatever way you were on set and I'm um, just working with you. And that's so important and it could lead to so many other things. Um, I've seen that time and time again, definitely. No, that's so true. So, and then you're still, obviously you're always modeling and auditioning. And then I thought it was pretty cool. What was it like when you got passion, like having a recurring role on a show? That was really cool. Um, that the casting director on that was awesome. My mom happened to be in town during my audition oh. and I was going to have her wait outside. He's like, no, bring her in. Let her watch your audition. I was like, really? I'm like, this is, you know, nobody re really does that. But uh, she came, she sat, she watched my audition. He's like, well, tell your mom. My mom doesn't speak English. So he, he said, tell your mom you just booked the job. Uh, and he was really sweet. And then I brought her to my fittings and the wardrobe people were taking Polaroids of us so she can have as a memory um, because she wasn't there for the job. So it was really cool. This casting director brought me on. Uh, quite a few times after that. And uh, yeah, that was a memorable one. I, I love that one. Um, oh, it was a great experience is, all the way around. What a story, you know? Yeah. What a story, especially somebody knowing how big of a moment that is to have your, you know, mm. your mom there watching your audition. Oh, that's. And my mom has never seen anything. Like she doesn't know how the entertainment works. Uh, she doesn't get it. Doesn't. So for her to be there and see all that was really, really cool. Yeah. It, it meant a lot to me. It's good that she came then and not while you're filming Hellraiser. <laughs> <laughs> she would have been like, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> What's oh, a Cenobite thing? What? <laughs> and of course, in a Greek accent, she would say that. <laughs> And you, you speak, so you grew up Greek household. Do you speak both? I do. That was my first language growing up. So my sisters wow. and my parents are all from Greece. Oh. And I was the accident that came along uh, when they moved to the States. Um, but yeah, so that was my first language. So at home, uh, I would learn English through my sisters who are both older than me. When they'd come home from school, I started learning English before I started uh, kindergarten. So wow. yeah, so at home, we mainly speak. Greek because of my mom. Yeah. Wow. So one of the, like, there's a lot of people that I interview and like my parents don't know who they are. And there's like some people that I'm like, how do you not know blank? You know, <laughs> but like when you're on a show, cause people don't always watch movies. People don't only watch TV series, right. but like when deal or no deal was on, t- when it was on, that was like must see TV. Like that show all the time. It, I, I don't know. It was just a combination of what it was, everything that was involved, like just the game of chance sort of and Howie and the way right. they strung the people along and going to commercial break. <laughs> like when you're just like, Oh, just please. So no. yeah. What? So for that, how did that come about? Like wh- how did that audition come, come to you? And what was the audition process? Like that was a, I love that show. And it's a family show, which is great. So that's, I think everybody loves it. Um, That audition came about through uh, my hosting agency, not my modeling agency, because we have an agency for each thing that we do. Um, And he's like, he's like, there's a hosting gig. Uh, uh, Don't know much about it. Again, there are not many details that come out. Uh, They just said it was a hosting audition. I said, sure. I'll go. Uh, went to the audition. And when I went there, I was like, is this a reality show? I, I thought it had to be reality TV. And I'm like, uh, this isn't for me. But I stuck it out just to find out. And uh, usually the first audition, there are a lot of people at the audition. This one, there was only one other girl on there at, at the audition. And then the callback, the second audition, if you make that round, it's usually less people. It was hundreds of girls. There were hundreds and hundreds of girls at the second part of it. Um, Again, they weren't saying anything other than it's a game show, but they wouldn't tell us who was involved until we actually booked the job and we're on set. And then somebody said, Howie Mandel. And I said, oh, I know who that is. He's funny. I love him. And one of the younger girls like, who's that? I'm like, don't worry, he's he's funny. You'll have a good time, which re- I realized at that time. Like, oh wow, you must be really a lot younger than me, because how do you not know Howie Mandel and the glove and the big yeah. hair? Yeah, maybe she would have known Bobby's world. Oh, Bobby's yeah. world. Yeah, that that and like some of his, con- he was so crazy. Like, I don't think people realize. Like now, I watch him on that and watch him on America's Got Talent. Like how like crazy his comedy was. It was insane. I, I didn't know Bobby's world, but I knew all his other stuff. Yeah. But the cool thing he did when we first started working together, he was telling all the girls, um, everybody, even the camera guys, everybody on set, the whole cast and crew, that if you listen to Bobby's voice and if you listen to the Gremlins voice, he did Gremlins too. It's the yep. same voice. Yeah. I had no idea. And I thought that was the coolest thing. I'm like, you're a Gremlin too? Yeah. Like that's the, and he did the he's like well listen to this voice and listen to this voice yeah. I was like oh yeah it is the exact same one <laughs> who knew <laughs> but I I love it. and he would do it for people on during commercial breaks he would do the voice for everybody and of course everybody went crazy and loving it so with the first did you guys do any like dry runs like without like a real audience and everything before it went live oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, quite a bit. Uh, we oh, needed yeah. to because that march over, <laughs> oh, yeah. we're all in heels and these dresses. You're trying to go up over the steps with a briefcase. Got to make sure you can walk and talk. And well, we weren't talking at the time, but um, just walking over. Uh, some people did trip, not during rehearsals, like actually during the game. Oh. We've had people trip or drop the cases, but they we do the march a few times before they go on with a show. So they 
they tape it a few times over, they get all the looks, and then we start the game and do a full, and a one hour show takes four to six hours to tape. Oh, wow. What about, did you guys do the full game, like with a producer as a contestant or anything, or they didn't want to give that away? Like, did you know what the game was going to be like? rehearsals we had uh people stand in like a, okay. an extra they hire people to stand in and pretend to be a contestant just so we can learn the game and know when to cheer at the right point or be sad at the right point yeah. so really to understand the game so we had a i think a few days of rehearsals of everything from what we looked what the what we wore and um the contestants and playing the game and you know, just the whole process of when you walk off stage, when to stay on, just everything, everything. And it can, I don't think it can prepare you for watching the anguish or the cheers from like the emotion that people, it's just with that show. Cause it's such a chance and I'm sure obviously it's happened. You, you know, there's over like 200 episodes that you're on, like when they have not that many cases left and you open it up and you have that high amount and you just see like them crush and you see with yourself, <laughs> and like everyone else, you see like real emotion from you guys. It is, so, it, it's what makes it great. I honestly used to say, uh, I was such a tough Chicago chick until deal or no deal. I have never cried so much, laughed so hard because you really do get caught up in their story and oh. why they're winning the money the, and what they're going to do with it. So you just really get involved. You feel like you're one of their supporters. So I would find myself tearing up or just cheering so loud where I'm almost falling off the stage. It just, and a lot of the girls, and if you have a case that doesn't work out for them, you feel like it's all your fault. Like you just, broke their heart you killed them like it it devastating devastating you take it pretty hard oh yeah i was reading an interview you did i think it was on like msnbc when for when it came back or cnbc like when deal and deal came back a few years ago and i think it's so true like seeing people's lives change from this show it it's it's so remarkable to see it i remember one episode i always remember was that i think he was from I don't know. I, I think he was from Pennsylvania. He was a male nurse and he talked about like he lived in a really small. Oh, that was like you were rooting for somebody so hard. And I remember one of how he did like which he did a million times, like when he went to that break and he's like, and right oh. after. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll find out right. I, I don't oh. even remember the exact line. Right. Yeah, But those <laughs> but lines like when the, especially with torture. that. Show, yes. Yes. <laughs> I remember the nurse. They actually dressed us up as nurses for oh, the end yeah. of the game. Yep. Whoever was left on stage, yeah, he was a really nice guy. Ugh. There's so many people like that, like you said. It's like life. It's not like they're winning a few bucks. Some people do, but it's like life changing money. Life changing. Yeah, man. So at what point I was doing the? I like doing a lot of research on people. When did you meet your husband? He's a former football player, and he's from. Um, not my neck he's of the woods. He's from Pennsylvania. Like, yeah, he's from Pennsylvania, right? Yes, he is. Coopersburg. Okay. Do you know it? No, no. I just looked him up. I saw it like uh, near like, Allentown. Oh, that's not too far for me. I'm only 45 minutes from there. We're neighbors practically. Neighbors practically. Yeah, we we met in. I was living in LA. He was living in Baltimore at the time, and uh, we met in Jacksonville, Florida, at a charity event through mutual friends. We were there for an event and. We met and then we started getting all the details about each other. We hung out, we spent some time and it's like, okay, how are we going to do this? Um, we dated for years, long distance, oh, wow. uh, seven years. Yeah. Seven years. And we've been together now, 17, 18 years. Oh, wow. That's love. That's so true love. You moved to LA. You won. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great guy. Well, all your hosting, is there like a favorite hosting gig that you did? The ones that I can think of, there are certain people that I, that I got to interview for two different things. Uh, I worked with Extra. Oh, I saw that on there, yeah. And then uh, for the Motion Picture and Television Fund, it's a charity they do every year. Catherine Zeta-Jones and Michael Douglas have this event to raise money for the home. And 
I got to meet some of the most amazing people, like really cool people from like Helen Mirren, Dick Van Dyke. Remember Dick Van Dyke? Yeah. Um, Helen, uh, Tim McGraw was one of them. He was nice. one of my favorites. He was funny, really funny and nice, super nice guy. Tommy Lee was an interesting one. I bet. <laughs> Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah. I got my face licked in the middle of the interview, which I heard is his thing. He does that <laughs> often. I, I don't know how many Ooh. times he's done it, but uh, it, it was really fun. I was like, okay. And you can't really react. You're just, you're in the moment. It's like, ha ha. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, some memorable between those two got to meet a lot of great people and just, yeah, love the hosting part of it. Love it. That's awesome. No, just having that, that opportunity. I don't know about now in like the times that we live now, like hearing somebody lick somebody else's face. Yeah. I, I, oh, coronavirus. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> <Do that>. yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. That it caught me off guard <laughs> just a little bit. And then I saw another one. That and you... he's a fellow Greek. He's a fellow Greek. Oh, maybe one that's why. Maybe that's why he knew. And he's like, I can. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the reasoning though. Yeah. One of the photos, I think it was on either website, but it's you and Donny Osmond and you were hosting. Was that like an infomercial for like 70s or 80s music or something? Yes. It's still airing. They keep renewing it, which I'm nice. so excited about. Yeah. Really nice guy. Love Donnie. He, uh, so we did that infomercial and it's CDs of 70s music, all 70s nice. music. Who knew? But they're pretty popular. And I love the 70s. It reminds me of American Bandstand days. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of good music in the 70s. <laughs> Although I'm, I love the 80s too. But he does not age. What, when did you guys do that? How long ago was that? Years ago. Yeah. Um, and it was really cool because we shot that in Las Vegas where he was doing his show with his sister. And now, I mean, I remember Donnie and his whole family doing the show back in the day. Um, I feel like I've said back in the day a hundred times today, watching their uh, show. They were, you know, they're talented. It's a talented family, very talented family, but going to their show and watching them perform, I didn't realize how talented uh, Marie does opera music. She sings opera. She can sing rock and roll. I mean, she was, they were both just unbelievable. I was just blown away by both of them. So it was pretty cool to get that experience while <laughs> being there to work with him. They're like, come to the show. It's like, okay, sure. I'll come to the show. I'm glad I did. It was great. He doesn't age and he just did. I don't know. I, I don't know how long ago it was on, but he had like a daytime talk show for a few years too. Called like Donnie. I had forgotten about that. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Somebody mentioned it two days ago, and I can't believe I forgot about that. But he did have a talk show. Yeah. I can't. I don't know how long it lasted. If it was a couple years or so, but yeah, he <laughs> he can do it all. He's an actor. He won Dancing with the Stars, yeah, which I used to did. love watching. That he won. He was really good at dancing as well as singing. So he's got it all. Acting. He's... He he does or he did theater for a while. I believe. I somebody was telling me he did uh theater in chicago i forgot what it was oh but wow anyway he's quite talented he's been doing it for how many years when how he was super young on the osmonds right i mean since he Teen? was a kid yeah yeah probably i would imagine so so what are obviously right now with everything go like right now with coronavirus and everything i know i'm sure you have plans for things you want to do and it's all over have you thought or maybe you are still auditioning, like act, going back to acting at all. Is that like a passion that you still have or? I love hosting more than acting. I'm definitely still acting, but hosting's my main love. Yeah. Um, a lot of self-tape auditions during this time. I can't tell you how many self-tape auditions. A couple jobs, which has been nice. Oh, nice. It started to get busy recently. And then we shut down again. California is completely shut down uh so it's coming to a halt right now and yeah. with the holidays so i started working on my own project th during this time uh, for a long time i worked with people trying to get into entertainment um, i help others trying to figure out how to get started I, I, i've always been asked that question like where do you go where do you begin 
but more so when I was on deal or no deal. So I finally, we were sitting around quite a bit. So I thought, let me put it all together. So I'm creating a site called Showbiz Wiz. Oh, sweet. Helping others basically doing what we do. So I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, launches probably sometime in the new year. I, I'm not quite there yet. So, but I've been working on it for the last few months. That's really cool. Yeah, you're right. Like people somehow don't know how to get there. Obviously you can like lead it. What is it? Lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. I think it's something like that. So at least you can give people. Yeah. So you can give people like those building blocks and things that you learned over the years. So what are, I read that. I read that too, that you, that you were doing something like that. Either it was either on your website or on uh, mm -hmm. that interview you did for, uh, for deal or no deal. So, so people would just approach you and be like, Hey, how did you get here? Oh, I get the most either people I know or friends of friends or random people. I'll even get DMs on Instagram and you know Twitter and Facebook where they're asking, how do you get started? How did you get deal or no deal? That's the first question. Um, yeah. Where do I begin? So I started thinking about all the steps that I took. And now, mind you, it's different. It could be different for, for some people, but these are my experiences. And basically, I'm sharing those steps that I took. and then everybody can run with it, you know, and see where it takes them. But a lot of people, again, think it's, it's that glitz and glamour. Yeah. Um, and it is great. It's fun. There's a lot of perks that go along with our job. I'm not going to lie. We get to do a lot of cool, fun stuff. It's not, you know, the everyday job nine to five. So uh, it's just something I try to teach that like teach others like you know there's a lot of hard work that goes with it you really it's not a hobby it's a it's a job it's a business and you have to treat it like a business if you want it you can get it you just have to work really hard for it yeah no exactly like the glitz and glamour of it but but again you have to be prepared like when you were in miami and the agents were out partying i'm not saying some of those people are were partying until 5 a.m you know we're able to book gigs and get jobs and be successful but you have to like put your nose to the grindstone because early on they'll bring the you grind, back like right. your cast, like that casting director from passions. He was like, man, she comes to work. She works okay. hard. And next time I need somebody, I'm going to call her. If you notice, I interviewed a couple of casting directors. If you look at the movies they do, it's, it's mind blowing, but you see the same people like not in the main, main roles, but in the, the, it's crazy. I never thought that was a thing but they have like their go-to's like oh i need this guy i can trust him mm -hmm. it's remarkable it's building those relationships absolutely you build those rela relationships it's networking and if uh you did a great job the first time they'll hire you back they'll bring you back and i've seen it happen over and over again with so many people you're right i've yeah. seen the same thing with people that i don't know you watch the credits and you see you're like oh they've been in that movie and that yeah. movie and they brought them back onto that one <laughs> So it's really cool to see. And it's something I always tell people, just, you know, do your job, be happy, enjoy what you're doing and just work hard and it'll all come together. Man, Patricia was such a blast. Just a, what a cool moment that when she got passions, she was interviewing her mom, who's Greek. She was there to be able to be in the audition and watch her daughter and not only watch her daughter audition, but also land the role. That was a very special moment. And uh, and I love that there was so many times she was like, ooh, you're really making me think, which is why I love doing this, like finding out you know, why people started, how it started. And uh, it's cool that she's giving back. So anything that we talked about during the interview, I'm going to put the links in the episode notes. So check them out. And your homework is watch Hellraiser 5 Inferno. You can, while we're discussing it and trying to figure it out, you can figure it out along with us. The cast is great. You have Craig Sheffer, Nikki Turturro, James Remar, of course, Doug Bradley, and so many more. And remember, this is Scary Sequel Month. We don't mess around. So on Mondays, we have interviews. And so Monday, we have a bonus interview. So Rachel Currents, she's an actress, entrepreneur, real estate investor, and she has a very small scene in Hellraiser Inferno, but it makes us really think. She has Little Girl in the Rain. She has other roles along the years on uh, Disney, Nickelodeon, and lots more. She was a blast to talk to. So that'll be on Monday. 
So no going forward for the rest of this month, Monday interviews, Thursday reviews, and uh, we have some great guests lined up interview wise and for the reviews, some new, some new voices. So don't forget to review, rate, share our podcast, follow us on all social media at sequels only, and don't forget to check out our website, sequelsonly.com. Good night.